Good evening, church. I hope you're doing well. Tonight is Wednesday, and we are going to have class number five of the series, These Last Days. And the title of tonight's class is simply called The Psalm 83 War. The Psalm 83 War. If you have your Bibles with you, I would encourage you just to go ahead and open them up to the book of Psalm chapter 83. We're going to get there in a little bit, but I just want to kind of give you some background about this prophesied war and what it may mean uh, during this time period as we approach the uh, coming of the Lord. So one of the things in prophetic studies that I wanted to share with you is that th there seems to be a tendency to lump everything prophetically that has not happened yet to put that into the tribulation period. And some of the things will, will, are prophesied will be in the millennial reign and some things prophesied will come during uh, the beginning of eternity future after the millennial reign. But uh, this Psalm 83 war is, is a little puzzling because it doesn't appear to have happened yet, but it also doesn't appear to fit the tribulation period, nor does it fit the millennial reign or eternity future. So that would lead me to uh, speculate that if the war has not happened yet, and it doesn't fit any of those time periods, then we may see a war in the Middle East break out at some point, if we're still here, if we haven't been raptured, between Israel and surrounding nations um, in greater, uh, a greater level of war than we currently see. And so what I want to do is just kind of walk you through that. And the reason I think this is important in prophetic study is because if there is a war that is going to be fought, and if we haven't been raptured yet, then we very may well see Israel go to war with surrounding nations on a major scale. And if we do see that, we shouldn't be dismayed that we've missed the rapture or that we're going to go through the tribulation period or the tribulation period has already begun. Um, this war could happen between now and the beginning of the tribulation period. And even um, it, the rapture could happen either before this or after this prophesied war. So, um, so anyway, so I want to jump right in. So the first thing is, as I said earlier, sometimes in, in biblical prophecy, especially when it comes to wars, we, we put them all in the, the uh, end times, either the great the tribulation period, or we also have a war that's going to happen at the end of the millennial reign. But this war doesn't fit either one of those scenarios. So I wanted to kind of give you an idea what the Bible does say about upcoming wars during the tribulation period, and also the one that the war that happens at the end of the millennial reign so that you, we can distinguish between those and the Psalm 83 war. So here it is. The first one is uh, in the tribulation period is the Gog and Magog invasion. And you'll find that prophesied in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Now this is a Russia-Iran led coalition to invade Israel. And so it's a group of nations led by Russia and Iran who invade Israel. Uh, and it, it should include uh, Turkey, Afghanistan, Sudan, and Libya. Now for this to happen, Israel must be a nation without walls and at a peace, according to Ezekiel 38, 10 through 12. It says that when they're dwelling in peace in a land without walls, that this invasion comes from the north, and that's a Russia-Iran-led invasion. But that's gonna happen sometime probably at the beginning of the tribulation period. So uh, they'll, be, they'll invade and God will supernaturally defend Israel. And so um, that, that's something, that, that's not the Psalm 83 war that's prophesied. Another one is the Battle of Armageddon. And the Battle of Armageddon is from Daniel chapter 11, Joel chapter 3, Zechariah 14, and Revelation 19. Now the Battle of Armageddon, occur, Armageddon occurs in the Valley of Megiddo. And this will happen right at the very end of the Great Tribulation. And so at the end of the Tribulation period, there'll be a nation's will all, all gather together and descend on Israel to destroy the uh, nation of Israel. And that'll be the day of the Lord. When the Lord comes back, his foot touches the Mount of Olives and he defends Israel and destroys the armies of the Antichrist. But that is not the Psalm 83 war either. And so those two are, are gonna happen during the tribulation period. And there's also a war that's prophesied in Revelation 20 verses 7 through 10 that I'm just going to simply call the Millennial Reign War. It happens right at the end of the Millennial Reign. The Word of God tells us in Revelation chapter 20 that after a thousand years, after Satan has been bound, he will be loosed one more time. And when he is loosed one more time, he will gather the nations against Jesus Christ himself who will have been reigning on earth for a thousand years after he defeats the armies of the Antichrist at the Battle of Armageddon. 
And so this is a war that's going to happen, and this will happen at the end of the millennial reign, just before the great white throne judgment. And that's where the, the unrighteous dead are judged and thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15 tells us that. And so that's where uh, judgment is passed once and for all, and then we begin into eternity future. And there are no wars in eternity future. So, so this war has to happen sometime between now and before the tribulation period. And so that's why I say it's a kind of an important one to look at. When I was first studying this out, I happened to run across this in Bible studies years ago. And the only, thing, the only note I made was end time war. Because I thought for sure that it must have fit in the tribulation period. But then I ran across some other studies of, uh, about this war that led me to believe that it, it doesn't actually um, happen during the tribulation period. So um, Israel has fought many wars since becoming a nation in 1948. And uh, it's a miracle of God that the nation of Israel exists. And you all know that. We covered that in the last class or class before that. And it, it's just a miracle that God brought this nation back, the Valley of Dry Bones, back into their, their homeland and established them. Now, since being a nation, since 1948, Israel has fought many wars, large and small. I'm going to give you a few of them. In 1948, they fought the Arab-Israeli War. As soon as they came back into their land, five Arab countries gathered together and uh, attacked them, and Israel defeated them in battle. That's not the Psalm 83 War. And then in 1967, they fought the Six-Day War, a war with Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, and Israel again was victorious. That's also not the Psalm 83 War. In 1973, they fought the Yom Kippur War, and that was against Syria and Egypt, and ended in a ceasefire, and also Israel uh, remained. And in 1982, you had the first Lebanon War, and in 2006, you had the second Lebanon War. And there have been countless small skirmishes, countless uh, battles of terrorism in the Middle East. It is a hotbed of unrest surrounding the nation of Israel. However, all of these wars that Israel has fought, and all of the wars that I just told you about that will happen in the future, um, none of them fit the Psalm 83 scenario. And that's why I wanted to bring this teaching to you, because I think if we do see Israel go to war, there's going to be a lot of confused Christians because we're going to be wondering, well, why is this happening? It doesn't fit the end times prophecies. Um, but it is actually in Psalm 83. And so the, all of the previous wars that Israel has fought since 1948 will pale in comparison to the Psalm 83 war. And I'm going to share that with you directly from the Bible here in just a second. And so there will be a coalition of nations that come together that all surround Israel to descend upon Israel to wipe them off the face of the map. And Israel will be victorious according to the word of God in this war. So what I'd like you to do, if you're there uh, in Psalm 83, you can read this along with me. If not, you can just listen and I'll read it to you. And um, <clears throat> here's what the Bible says about the Psalm 83 war. O oh God, do not keep your silence. Do not hold your peace or be still, O oh God. For behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those, that, who, those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, come up, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspire with one accord against you. They make a covenant. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, Philistia and the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also has joined them. They are, they are the strong arm of the children of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, as to Caesarea and Jabin at the river of Kishon, who were destroyed in Endor, who became dung for the ground. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna who said, let us take possession for ourselves, the pastures of God. Oh, my God, make them like the whirling dust, like the chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest, as the flame sets the mountains ablaze, so may you pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your hurricane. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O oh Lord. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Let them perish in disgrace, that they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Over all the earth. And so right there is a prophesied war of all these people groups, these nations coming against Israel. And it's a coalition, a confederacy, a coalition 
of, of uh, enemies of Israel. And they surround Israel and they said, you know what, we're just going to take care of this once and for all. We're going to wipe them off the face of the map. We're going to destroy this nation and, and we'll, we'll take their land. But God has something else to say about that because in this uh, Psalm 83, you can also read uh, two other major prophetic passages that speak to this war. Jeremiah 49, 1 through 27, and Obadiah 1, 1 through 21. Now there's a book that you can read, and I'm going to recommend this to you if you'd like to further study this out in deeper, uh, deeper study. It would be the book called Israelistine by Bill Salas. Israelistine by Bill Salas. His last name is spelled S-A-L-U-S. And he goes into this in great detail. We actually taught a series on this years ago um, on a Wednesday night. It's been a while, but, uh, but this war has not happened yet. So let me give you the, the modern day names of all those names that I just read to you. The Arab Confederacy that is gonna come against um, Israel in the Psalm 83 war. Edom, Edom is Southern Jordan and the Palestinian refugees. Ishmaelites, they're Saudi Arabia. Moab is central Jordan and the Palestinian refugees. Hagarites, Egypt. Gebel, northern Lebanon. Ammon, northern Jordan and the Palestinian refugees. Amalek, the Negev and Sinai Peninsula, Peninsula areas. Philistia, the Gaza Strip and Hamas. Tyre, southern Lebanon and Hezbollah. Assyria is Syria and northern Iraq. Now, all of these nations currently surround Israel, and all of them will come together at one time and attack Israel. And in, in the Bible and history uh, that we see, there's never been a coalition of this that fits this description that surrounds Israel to attack them. That's why I believe this, this Psalm 83 war is an important part of the puzzle uh, of the end time events. And, and so this war could happen at any time. Uh, now, between now and when the tribulation period begins. And so um, the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I wanted to uh, give you some encouragement that if we do see some major unrest in the Middle East that fits this, and we are still here, we have not been raptured, then it's going to be the Psalm 83 war. And it's, going, it's not going to be the war, uh, it's not going to be the Battle of Armageddon, and it's not going to be the uh, Gog and Magog invasion that's going to happen from Ezekiel 38-39. And it's not the uh, final war of the millennial reign. This is a different war. And so um, the Word of God tells us in, in this passage and many other scriptures that Israel will defeat this con confederacy. I'll just give you a few scriptures. Ezekiel 36-7, Genesis 12-3, Obadiah 1-9-18, Ezekiel 24-13-14, Jeremiah 49, 20 through 21, and uh, a few others. Isaiah 17, 1, uh, Jeremiah 49, 23 through 26, Isaiah 19, 16 through 17. Now, one of the major things that I believe we'll be looking for, and if you see this happen, you, you need to look up because Jesus will be coming soon, is uh, the fate of Damascus, Syria. Now, Damascus, Syria is the, uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, continually inhabited uh, city in the world. And it has never been destroyed. And it's prophesied in Isaiah 17, 1, in Jeremiah 49, 23 through 26, that Damascus, Syria, will be utterly destroyed. It'll be completely laid to waste. Let me read this to you. Isaiah 17, 1, an oracle concerning Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease to be a city and will become a heap of ruins, a heap of ruins. That has never happened. And so uh, it, would, it would lend uh, to, to believe that Damascus, Syria, since Syria is going to be part of this war, could very well be leveled and destroyed during this war. And so that has not happened. Listen to Jeremiah 49, 23 through 36, again prophesying regarding Damascus, Syria. Concerning Damascus, Hamath and Arpad are confounded, for they have heard the bad news. They melt in fear. They are troubled like the sea that cannot be quiet. Damascus has become feeble. She turned to flee, and panic seized her. Anguish and sorrows have taken hold of her as a woman in labor. How is the famous city not forsaken, the city of my joy? 
Therefore her young men shall fa fall in her squares, and all her soldiers shall be destroyed in that day, declares the Lord of hosts. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus, and it shall devour the strongholds of Ben-Hadad. And so it would, it would seem that in this war, Damascus, Syria is going to be destroyed. So there's two things we should be mindful of that could potentially happen regarding wars in the Middle East. One is the Psalm 83 war. That could happen really at any time uh, in our lifetime. And that would be a coalition of nations, the ones that I just gave you, coming together to destroy Israel and Israel uh, re uh, having a great victory and pushing them back. And so that's, that would be the Psalm 83 war. Now Damascus, Syria could be destroyed in this war or it could happen at another time. That's another prophetic sign to look for because it's never happened. And so if we see Damascus, Syria destroyed, we should be looking up because Jesus is coming soon. If we see the nations that surround Israel form a coalition and decide once and for all that they're going to destroy the nation of Israel and the Israeli people, then we should, we should look up because uh, that means that, that that has been fulfilled and we're moving even closer to um, the, the 70th week of Daniel, the tribulation period. Now, here's the way this could happen. It could be that the church is raptured and we're taken up and then the Psalm 83 war happens and then uh, a peace treaty is made and then uh, the, with Israel, between Israel and the Antichrist or a, a, a covenant made between them. And that could happen in that order and then go into the tribulation period. Or we could see the Psalm 83 war and then be... Uh, the church be raptured and then the peace treaty be signed uh, with Israel by, and the Antichrist and then the tribulation period beginning. So it, it could happen in a number of different ways and the main thing that I, I, I'm concerned about with this particular passage of prophetic scripture, the reason I included it in this teaching is because I believe that if this happens and we don't know about this potential war Psalm 83, we, then, then a lot of Christians are going to be confused and fearful that we've entered into the tribulation period, and that's not the case, um, according to Scripture. So it doesn't. Ha so how does this war fit the prophetic timeline? Well, one, it hasn't happened yet. It doesn't fit any past wars. Number two, it does not fit the seven-year tribulation, as I said. It doesn't fit the millennial reign. And it doesn't fit eternity future because there will be no wars in eternity future. That's all going to be done. So it must fall sometime between the now, this day, and the beginning of the tribulation period. And we could be here to see it or we could already be raptured. The, the Bible doesn't really say. So I just wanted to bring this to y'all's attention because um, I've not really heard a whole lot of teaching on this. I, I mean, it, it's not really included in a lot of prophetic studies. And we spent a lot of time digging through the Bible, digging through the Word of God. And, uh, and also when we read the, the book, um, Israelis Time by Bill Silas, we spent a lot of time studying that out to see how accurate it could be. And um, I think it's worth including in the series uh, for, uh, that we're doing these last days because it's something that could impact us. I mean, if there's a big war in the Middle East, it'll have shockwaves going all through the world. I mean, it'll have an impact on, on our day-to-day -day life for a season. And so, um, so, you know, in many ways. And, and so if we see that, and we're still here, don't lose heart. Don't be in fear. It does not mean that we've missed the rapture. It does not mean that the uh, end times have started. It just means that we're getting closer. Really, the time that we're in right now is in Matthew chapter 24. Jesus tells us, he gives us the, the signs. And I want to read this to you as I close, because this is a great passage of Scripture. Uh, talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And his disciples were concerned at this time as well, and they had questions. So let me read this to you. We'll close with this scripture. Matthew 24, verse 1, Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will be not one, there will be left here, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, when will these things be? And what will the sign of your coming and the end of the age be? 
And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. The birth pains. The King James calls it the beginning of sorrows. Now Jesus is saying when you see wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places and famines and pestilences and diseases, don't, don't be afraid because that doesn't necessarily that you're, the end has come. These are the beginning of sorrows. These are the birth pains of what's about to come. And so the season that we are in right now, I believe is the beginning of the sorrows. We're seeing all these things happen in our nation. We've been seeing them for the last 50 to 60 years pretty regularly. I mean, even back to the turn of the century, we had World War I, World War II, and then it goes on and the wars become more and more frequent. We've got earthquakes happening all over the world. We have uh, uh, nations against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. And I believe the nation against nation translates to ethnic groups against ethnic groups. We have that going on all over the world right now. And so we're seeing these things, but the end is not yet. We're not at the, we're not in it right now. And if we see a war break out and we're still here, do not be afraid uh, that you've missed it. All right. Because it could very well be the Psalm 83 war and we may see that. So I hope this brings some comfort to you. I hope this uh, study blesses you and if you have any questions of course you can you can email me or you can reach out to the church and we'll, we'll do our best to get back to you i hope you all are doing well and I look forward to next week's class uh, so come back and tune back in next week on wednesday at 7 p.m we'll be broadcasting class number six god bless